Howdy. So this is a problem about a spaceship that is accelerating uh, to the speed of light, but with an acceleration g. So yeah, just um, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So we know that this situation will not happen. You know, so uh, according to uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, no object with mass can travel at the speed of light. It has to be massless. Um, still, you know, we get uh, the opportunity to uh, play around with the kinematic equations. So, um, first question: How many days will it take a spaceship to accelerate to the speed of light? The speed of light is three times ten to the eight meters per second. So, pretty fast. With the acceleration g, and g is nine point eight meters per second squared. So you are being asked for a time. Okay, so uh, remember your, your kinematic equations. Uh, this is one of them. This is another one. And this is the third one. So this one gives you velocity as a function of the position. That's not really what we want. This one gives you velocity as a function of time, which is also not what we want. But this one gives you the um, Wait, 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 I'm getting confused here. This is the one we want for the first uh, question. So we want to know how long it will take, so the time that it's going to take to reach some velocity, in this case, the speed of light. Uh, and we know the acceleration, which is g. OK, so out of these three kinematic equations, uh, the one that we need is this one. OK, so you know, this is part A. The initial velocity is going to be 0. The final velocity is the speed of light. Uh, the acceleration is going to be g. And we want to know the time. So the time is going to be c divided by g. So this is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we look at the units, meters divided by second and meters divided by second squared, this is equal to meters second squared divided by meters per second. So the meters go away and one of the seconds goes away uh, well, with this one. So the units are in seconds as we expect because this is a time. So you know, we just bring out our calculator. So this is 3.06 times 10 to the 7 seconds. And 
the answer is given in days. So we have to make the conversion between seconds and days. So 3.06 uh, times 10 to the seven seconds. We are going to multiply this times one and we want the seconds to be down here. So there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And then we're gonna multiply again times one and we want the hours to be down here. So 24 hours is one day, right? So the hours go away, uh, the seconds go away and now your units are in days. So it's gonna be uh, these the number that we got for the time divided by 3,600 times 24. Which is uh, 86,400. So I can put it over here just so that we remember. 3.06 times 10 to the seven seconds. Um, well, I guess the, we already know that it's in days. Divided by uh, 86,400, uh, 86, the unit is day. So that is uh, 300, and 54 days, which with significant figures, and if you write it in scientific notation, you get the 3.6 times 10 to the two days. Okay, so if you, fall with the acceleration uh, produced by, by gravity on Earth, if you fall with that acceleration for a year, um, you will reach the speed of light, at least in the Newtonian universe. You know, again, we know that um, in the Einstein universe, you, you will never get there. But in the classical universe, it will take you about a year. So yeah, the speed of light, I guess, is pretty big, or maybe the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is pretty small. So this one was part A. For part B, uh, it asks how far will it travel during this interval, the, the spaceship? So in this case, uh, we already know the time. Um, I had it here in seconds. Yeah, 3.06 times 10 to the seven seconds. So we are asked for a distance, how far will it travel during this interval? And we have time, acceleration, and final velocity. So which one can we use? Right, so we know that the initial velocity is zero, so we can forget about that. We can assume that it starts at x equals zero, so we can forget about this one. And here we just have the position as a function of the time um, and the acceleration, which is also given. 
So x is going to be, I guess the better way to do this would be to move this one to the other side. So that is minus x0. x minus x naught, and then this will be delta x. Um, one half of g t squared. So one half of 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is this. 3.06 times 10 to the seven seconds. And that is gonna be squared. So the units, we have meters per second, multiply times second squared. Uh, sorry, this is meters per second squared. Multiply times second squared. You get rid of the second squared, you end up with meters, which is exactly what you want because that is a displacement. So we just bring out uh, the calculator. Mm. Oh no, I just deleted the number. Mm. Okay, well, 3.06 times 10 to the seven squared times 9.8 divided by two. So the displacement is 4.6 times 10 to the 15 meters. And yeah, that's the answer that now uh, it's on the homework. So this was part Okay, so you know, let's just put it in here because why not? We are learning all this information about the system. Okay, so for part C, it asks what fraction of a light year is your answer to part B? So you have to uh, get this answer in light years as opposed to meters. So in order to do that, you need to know what is a light year in meters. So velocity equals displacement divided by the change in time for light, this is C. Um, del delta T is given, it's gonna be one year. And delta X, that's what we want to know. So then delta X is C times delta T. C is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And the time is one year. And we need to uh, get to seconds, right? Um, in order for these to be compatible. So let's multiply times one. We put one year over here. How many days? Uh, 365.25, but we can probably omit that uh, days. And we just calculated what was one day in seconds. So one day uh, was uh, 86,400, I believe, seconds, right? So 
Uh, these years go away, these days go away. We have seconds. Uh, this second goes away with this one. And now we have uh, meters as the unit. So delta x is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 times 365 times 86,400. So 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. So this is equal to one light year. So this distance was 4.6 times 10 to the 15. And one light year is 9.46. So um, then delta x, because uh, this is a different delta x, this is the light year. So let's not get confused there, is 4.6 times 10 to the 15 meters. And we know that 9.46. We just calculated it times 10 to the 15 meters is equal to one light year. So the meters go away. Uh, we just divide this one by this one. So the 4.6 divided by 9.46. And we get um, 0. 49 light years. Okay, so this was part C. So, you know, if you're on this spaceship accelerating um, uh, with G at 9.8 meters per second squared, it's going to take you about a year to reach the speed of light. And in that year, you will have covered uh, 0.49 light years, right? So of course, um, light, it's always traveling at this speed. So it, it will have completed uh, one light year. So, yep, this is problem um, number two. Hope you uh, uh, learn a lot. Thank you.